friends, you're listening to Open Heart Program with Olga Anishenko, and we have a guest today. Her name is Tatiana Lazarenko, and today we will be talking about the difficulties in marriage. Tanya will be talking from her own experience, but she's not going to be talking about her story. She'll be sharing in general what women can experience in marriage and not even know what it means and we just pray that god will lead women out of bondage and maybe even men but today we will be talking more about situations that families and especially women are facing tanya welcome to our program thank you so much for being ready to share your heart with us we bless you and Feel free to tell us what's on your heart. Yes. Um, I wanted just to say that um, we, uh, God designed marriage to be beautiful and nurturing and just an example of Christ. And unfortunately, we live in a sinful world that that is not the case. And even sometimes in Christian families where we should be showing Christ's example of how Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. But even in Christian marriages, we often see so much dysfunction and so much hurt and so much pain. Um, and I'll just be talking about that today. Um, so I personally went through a really difficult marriage. Um, and, uh, and I thought that everybody else around me had a, more, a normal marriage. So I really felt so alone that I was the only one suffering. Years later, I realized that there are women all across the world who are suffering, suffering in their marriages as well. And um, so what I'm going to talk about today, maybe you, the listener, can't relate to what I'm talking about, but chances are huge that there is someone in your life who's going through what I'm going to talk about. So you, it might not be obvious from the outside because people, we are really good um, at hiding our hurt. You go to a party, you go to church, people, people are really good on putting on a smile and, you know, acting like everything's good for a couple hours and they go home. And the things that I'll talk about, the, the dysfunction and the hurt, it happens behind closed doors. It happens when nobody is looking. So I think it's really good for everybody to be aware that this goes on. So if you live in a happy, healthy marriage where you're like, wow, God gave me a great husband. It's good for you to know that that's not the case for everybody, unfortunately. So what we're going to talk more specifically about is men who are angry and controlling in their marriages. So they take out their anger and control on their wives. And that's probably primarily what we'll talk about. And, and sometimes their children. So not, we're not talking about men who are maybe angry at work or something like that. We're talking about very specific here. And so what happens is these men, they're consistently disrespecting, insulting, and devaluing their partner. Devaluing is like, just really like, uh, just always making her feel like she's worthless. She's not important. She can't do anything right. Mm -hmm. So that is what we will be talking about today. So um, I want to start off by talking about different tactics that these controlling men use, okay? So the first one we'll talk about is psychological. Um, so one thing they, these men sometimes use is mind games, just kind of messing with her mind and making her doubt her reality or her own thoughts. So they'll use mental coercion, making her do what they want her to do, um, using looks or actions to generate fear. Um, they'll do conditional affection. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, they'll use manipulation. Um, they'll spy on her. They'll go through their partner's email, mail, um, te text messages, things like that. They'll do stalking. They'll treat their partner like a servant. They'll use the children against her or to spy on her, their mom. Uh, they'll deprive their partner of friends and family. Um, They'll maybe possibly frequently move their home or their church, always at a different location. So they'll make her feel like she's crazy or they'll publicly humiliate her. So the example I want to give you guys, because this is a pretty large list, but just to kind of give you an example of what I'm talking about, I'll talk about conditional affection. 
So let's say that a woman comes up to her man and tells him, you know, she misses him and she just wants to spend some time with him. So if he's this controlling guy who needs to have power and does things only how he wants things to be done, he may say something like, well, you don't deserve it. I'll spend time with you when you, um, when you behave the right way and you do as you're told. So as you can see, like that just totally throws a woman off guard. She's like, she, this is the person she married, the person she loves, and here, this is the response she's getting. Then another example I wanna give you a different uh, area is spiritual control and manipulation. Um, and so sometimes a man will uh, misuse scriptures or God to control her, right? So he'll de uh, demand submission and obedience. And one thing I've learned about that is submission is a good thing. The Bible talks about it. We submit to the law in, in our land. We have to submit to the, you know, the lights, uh, like the red light, green light, you know, to stop signs. And that's all meant to protect us and bring safety and security. But one thing I've learned is when submission is demanded, it's no longer submission. It's oppression, mm -hmm. right? So he can demand obedience from his wife and he, he can question her salvation saying, oh, I'm not sure you're saved the way you're behaving. You're not behaving like the Bible says, you know, um, uh, letting, not letting her go places. Um, so, and the one that I wanted that, so that was my psychological kind of area. Mm -hmm. And I want to give you an example of misusing scripture or God to control her. So if he knows the Bible, even a little bit, he may quote scripture to make her do what he wants her to do. For example, he may say in the Bible, it says that wives are supposed to, to submit to their husbands and everything. Right. So they take scripture out of context what he's trying to quote there is from Ephesians 5 and the whole section is Ephesians 5 21 through 3. So I would encourage you go ahead and read the whole section. So the entire section starts with submit, submit one to another. And part of the passage commands husbands to love their wives as Christ loves the church. So that means unconditional love with an attitude of being the head servant right? So he can quote scripture to make the woman do what he wants her to do. The question is, is he following scripture and treating her the way the Bible says he should? If he's this type of man that I'm describing, no, he isn't. That doesn't apply to him. Or he thinks he, in his mind, he might think he is, but he truly isn't. If you look at what the scripture says and you look at his behavior. So in fact, he is treating her the opposite of what God says he should. As we, if you read that scripture, you'll, you'll see. And can so, I, add, yeah. I heard one lady say that if he would follow God with all of his heart, it would be so, so easy to submit to him. Exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a really, really good point for sure. If the guy is, the man is really trying to do what the Bible says, he is going to protect and he will, um, tell his wife things that to protect her, to shelter her, to encourage her, you know? So absolutely. The next section is um, just verbal uh, manipulation. And this can be uh, put downs, uh, name calling. Um, this happens even with men who say they're Christians. They'll, they'll curse and call their wife nasty names, um, shouting, swearing, threats inappropriate jokes about her that make her feel really uncomfortable, um, the silent treatment, um, continual arguing, so finding reasons to argue all the time or regularly, um, belittling her, making her feel unimportant, um, controlling conversations, so not letting her really say what she wants to say, but being in control that the conversation only goes the way he wants it to go and only what is said is only okay, what he wants to be said, um, countering or discounting, um, criticizing and blaming her for anything he wants to blame, blame her for. Mm -hmm. So I want to give you guys an example of one of these as well. And the one I want to give an example of is discounting. So what does that look, what can that look like? So let's say a man yells at a woman 
So when she confronts him about it and tells him that it really hurt her, the way he treated her, he, he can say something like, what are you talking about? You upset me. And so I yelled just a little bit. It's not a big deal. Why are you getting uptight over nothing? It's not like I hit you or anything serious. So can you see like he's totally like she told him, you know, that really hurt me. Mm-hmm. And he's like, that was nothing. What are you talking about? So you know, that's like discounting. So another um, section is financial. So um, what that could look like is controlling the money, being so controlling, always looking and being like, oh, you spent $5 over there. What did you spend it on? That, uh, I didn't say that was okay. So very controlling. Um, unilateral decisions. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. I'll give you an example. So lying about finances, hidden accounts, hiding accounts from her, restricting her employment, like not wanting her to go work, wanting her to be completely dependent on him financially, not paying child or spousal support, um, denying basic needs, um, being so stingy that like giving her not enough money to pay for food for the week and be like, well, you you make it work, you know, Um, requiring an account for every penny. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example of unilateral decisions. So he may make decisions on a regular basis without involving his wife or his partner. The decisions he makes benefit him and do not take into account his partner or his children. Like what would be good for them? If she tries to speak up and tell him, well, this is good for the family. If we spend money on this or if we don't do this, he may tell her that he's the man of the house. And he knows what's best for everybody and for her not to question him. Mm-hmm. So and the, another section um, is animal control, using the animals in a way that's inappropriate and controlling the family with, anim- with the pets that are there. So examples are like kicking the dog, throwing the cat, harming or killing an animal, even like a hamster or something, um, threatening to get rid of the family pet. So neglecting an animal giving pets more affection and attention than the partner um, and throwing things at the animal. So he may use uh, the family pet as a way to control his partner and tell her, if you don't tell you, if you don't shape up around here, if you don't start doing what I told you to do, I'll get rid of the pet. It's kind of using that as a threat, you know, as um, mm-hmm. um, blackmail. So an- a- another section we have, and we have a, a couple more sections, a few more sections is property, how, how he can use property to um, intimidate or disrespect her. Um, and so examples of that would be like punching or uh, cu- punching walls or doors, kicking or hitting furniture, throwing things, destroying things, slamming doors, pounding tables, um, sabotaging the car, her car, maybe somehow making it so she can't drive someplace, um, going through the phone, using um, weapons or um, hiding things. So an example of of this is if he is very careful with his things and but totally has no respect for her things at all, like throwing her things her way without asking her or just destroying her things, but not his things. That's that would be an example of that. So we got two more. This next one is physical intimidation and control. And examples of this are shoving, grabbing, slapping her, um, kicking, pinching her to cause her pain, to make her do or stop doing something, Mm -hmm. pulling hair, scratching, restraining, as in like keeping her from leaving the room um, by standing in front of it, putting his arms around her neck, uh, posturing to intimidate, and I'll give you an example of that one, um, and making her move or not move against her will. So an example of uh, posturing to intimidate. So let's say if he's like really angry and upset at his partner, and he stands in front of her all puffed up and strong, just to just scare her and intimidate her with his size, like he could do something if he wanted to, but he's holding back, but that's still enough to bring such fear and it, you know, into a woman. Okay, the next one we're gonna talk about is sexual. So this is kind of uncomfortable to talk about, but we're gonna talk about it anyway. So rape, 
And that does happen in marriage. And I know sometimes people say, well, that's why you got married. You got married so that you can have sex. Well, it's inappropriate if a man is forcing and making his wife have sex if she's not, not doesn't want to do it then. And that does happen, unfortunately, even in marriage. Yeah, um, we'll add, um, Tanya, if he is not nice to her, she would not feel like doing it, you know? Yeah, Because for really- sure. It really comes from the heart. You just want to do it with a person you really love and who respects you and who is abusing you and kicking you and threatening you. How would you like to have sex with him? You know, it's, and it's true. Not, it's not like she's misbehaving. She just doesn't feel like it. Exactly. Well, you're so right. You're so right. And a lot of men feel like that's their wife's duty. Like you got married. Your duty is to you know, we have to have sex when I want to have sex. But in fact, that's not scriptural. You, you can look at the Bible. If, if a man is mistreating her, you know, just uh, being really mean to her, you know, that's, it's not God's heart for, for her than just to be available to, you know, satisfy him sexually whenever but he wants. The feelings are involved, right? We're not just animals. Exactly. Exactly. In fact, in the Bible, it does talk about how he is to be gentle with her and, you know, like treat her as the weaker vessel and to honor her, you know, and if a man doesn't do that, his uh, prayers won't be answered. You know, that's one of the scriptures it says. So that is so important to have this healthy, even sexual, healthy sexual life is to have this uh, nice, good respect between two people. So absolutely. So uh, more examples of like this, just sexual coercion um, and control is unwanted touch. Um, sexual comments that, you know, make her feel uncomfortable, jokes or put downs, attacking her body parts, you're like, oh, man, you're, you're so fat, or like, you, I don't like this about you or that about you, um, requiring bizarre sexual acts, um, pornography, affairs, interrupting sleep, and extreme jealousy. So I'll give you guys an, an, an example of this one, too. For example, if he wakes her up in the middle of the night, when she's asleep because he's in the mood to have sex. You know what I mean? That's unless she agreed to that prior. And if she's really okay with that, but you, you know what I mean? That's just not appropriate. Um, Or if he makes her, uh, makes comments to her that she's not a good lover, that she, you know, to make her feel bad and, um, or to make her do things in bed that she's not comfortable with. So those are just some examples of that. So that's, that's my list. That's my list of things, you know, that's tactics that angry controlling men can use in a relationship to really um, um, instill fear, intimidation, to get what they want all the time. These are the different tactics they can even use. And what I want to talk about is um, uh, these kind of men, they fall on a spectrum. Does that kind of make sense? Mm-hmm. Um, so some of them will maybe just use a few of these tactics and there's a gradation and some of them may use almost all of these tactics. So it, it just really depends on the guy. Um, what I do wanna mention now is that each of these categories that I just explained are actually different types of abuse. So what I was talking about has a name and I know abuse is a very scary word and we really, really hope and wish that this doesn't happen, especially in Christian families, you know, um, but all of that is actually considered abuse, you, the, uh, an oppression where a man is abusing, oppressing his wife. So if you listening have experienced one of these, you know, on more or less a regular basis, um, it's possible that you're in an abusive relationship. And one thing that's really important to know is abuse is the opposite of love. But if he treats you this way, that's not love. Um, And so the definition actually of domestic abuse is a consistent pattern of abusive behavior that is used by one partner to gain or maintain power and control over another intimate or romantic is another word partner in a relationship. So it happens between romantic partners and this kind of behavior, it brings about intimidation and fear. And of course, um, one thing to, to know is that all, like I mentioned, all, all of these relationships, they're not exactly the same. So what I experienced, what another woman experienced, it, we might have some slight differences, 
in the most part, though, there are a lot of similarities. Um, and what I do want to mention, though, there is differences in intensity. Um, so how intense an abuse is toward a woman uh, in severity, how severe it is, um, and the frequency. So some women might be abused like all day, every day, right? Another woman might experience it once a week or less frequently. So it does it is different. One thing that is um, what they've learned, though, is that abuse does get worse over time. So that's something to remember. Um, so this, this whole list that I mentioned, it's not an exhaustive list, even though it's a really large list and they include a lot of things, it, it doesn't, it can possibly list everything because really anything can be used to abuse somebody. And I want to clarify that. It's not that people are trying to be so picky and being, oh, you know, just trying to find someone who is doing something abusive. You know what I mean? What it is, is it's kind of like, I'll give you an example, like an alcoholic. Alcoholic would do anything and everything to get a drink. And we're not talking about alcohol. We're actually talking about abuse and abuse and alcohol are two very different things. Abuse, uh, alcoholism and drug addiction do not cause abuse, even though abuse can be more severe in situations where a person is using drugs and alcohol, but that's not the cause of it. Abuse is actually its own thing, its own problem that the man has that he needs to work through um, if he chooses to do that. But just to give you this example, the alcoholic will do anything to get a drink. So in the same way, someone who's abusive, a man who's abusive in his mind, he will uh, do and use whatever he wants to, to abuse his partner. Does that make sense? So he, the problem is inside. The abusive person has an abuse problem inside. Just kind of to explain that a little bit better. Um, another thing is, Olga, you mentioned this at the beginning of the program, that in the majority of abusive relationships, it is the male who abuses the women, woman. However, it, that is not always the case. There are women who are abusive to their partners. So that does happen. I don't want to minimize that because it is wrong. Either way, it's wrong. However, um, the vast majority of cases where there is abuse, it is the male abusing the female. And that's why I, I am just using that as a generalization because that is usually the case. So yeah, I just, uh, I just kind of talked to you all of you just about the different um, areas of abuse, uh, different tactics that a controlling man can use to oppress, um, and control his um, romantic partner. And all of these things honestly are a sin. You, you just can't get around it. That is just not okay to be treated in that, in, for a woman, man to treat a woman in that way. And that's definitely not God's heart when he created marriage. Um, and so the Bible has a lot to say about that. Um, so yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. So if a woman is listening to this and she says, oh, I just realized I'm in this abusive relationship, but what do I do next? Can you give us the short steps she can take to get out of abuse or how can she get help? Absolutely. Is it to talk to him, if there's still hope that he will understand that he's abusing her or what would be the, the way out of this situation? That's a very good question, Olya. So one of the things that's really important is the man, he, he wants the wife to always focus on him, all her attention, just try to figure out how to please him, how to make him happy, how to keep him from abusing her. And that's what happens. Many women in these kind of situations, they spend most of the time, if not all of their time, praying for their husband, trying to figure out how to, how to fix the situation. What I'm going to suggest is actually to take a step back and focus on your healing, focus on your relationship with God. You know how they say a lot of times um, in church, our focus shouldn't be something on this earth. Our focus should be Jesus. So if we're focusing so much on our partner and they're constantly demanding so much energy and time from us, that's not, that's, that's not where our focus should be. Our focus should be on Jesus and asking Jesus to lead us, to, to help us heal. And I do have... Um, a few resources that um, the women can call. Um, one of them is um, the Family Justice Center. It is, um, there are family justice centers all across the US um, and they, are, they help women who are in these types of situations and they're kind of like a one-stop shop 
for a woman who has been in abusive relationships. They can help her in just any many different areas of life, um, maybe filing um, paperwork to protect her, you know, providing counseling, providing all sorts of things, housing if she needs housing. So um, you can just even Google, you know, Family Justice Center where you live. So another great resource is um, Abuse Recovery Ministry Service. And the Christian um, faith-based organization, and they go by the acronym ARMS. Um, and I can give you their phone number. Um, their phone number is 503-846-9284. Um, and they are based in Oregon. Um, however, they do have groups in different states uh, in America, as well as in Mexico, Kenya, and Canada. And just giving them a call and just be talking to them and getting some help from them would be good too. Thank you, Tanya, for sharing this very important information. I hope many women and men will hear this information and will understand, is there a red flag in their life? Is it time to speak up? Is it time to take action? Um, we can only pray that God can give you proper decision to make. Uh, Tanya shared with us some phone numbers to call. And uh, if you are in an abusive relationship, I believe it is not a sin to get divorced because God does not want you to be hurt. We bless you all who are listening to us. Of course, there is room for prayers. Of course, there is room for communication in a family, but there is also room for safety and action. May God bless you in the Jesus name. Amen.